Hello everyone, this is Maurizio, editor-in-chief of powerelectronicsnews.com uh, and welcome to PCIM showing in uh, Nuremberg. I have the pleasure today to be here with Peter Waver, Division President Industrial Power Control at Infineon Technologies. Hi Peter, welcome board. How are you? I'm Maurizio, very nice to see you again. <laughs> yeah, good to see you again. Yeah. How is it going? Everything is good? One year ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I would say everything all, all okay, right? Good, good. But of course last year business was booming like hell. Mm. Now it's a bit of the aftermath, you know, the typical semiconductor cycle. So super high demand moderating now yeah so yeah. we are not anymore in allocation let's put it like this <laughs> yeah so we are a pcim so tell me what's news from uh, from infineon can uh, can tell uh, tell us more about your latest uh, advancement latest product carbon footprint announcement that uh, we have uh, posted on powerelectronicsnews.com uh, yeah. yesterday i guess yes yeah yes. yeah thanks for the question i think that's a very important topic for us mm -hmm because we deliver what we committed. Actually, I was asked uh, now many times by customers, what about the transparency on your product carbon footprint? And the last um, discussion and also question we had was exactly one year ago at a PCIM. Yeah. We met a big industrial customer and they asked me about when would you be able to deliver um, tangible data providing also the transparency to measure, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. what, what the exact product carbon footprint of dedicated products is. And I said, we're working on it, which was also already the case a year ago, and we're gonna deliver next year. <laughs> and that's what we now finally managed. To give you an idea, so of course we have set ourselves a um, very ambitious target regarding CO2 reduction, yep. right? For example, switching our manufacturing and everything at Infineon to green electricity, where we really made good progress, impacting positively our product carbon footprint. But then of course also providing the detailed amount of data which is required to then also make a proper calculation regarding the product carbon footprint of the individual yes. product. And that is now what we are launching. Also you can go on our website, infineon.com slash product carbon PCF, product carbon okay. footprint. And there you see already dedicated examples how the product carbon footprint of the named products is being composed. And as we speak, we are now able to bring the detailed information for about half our overall product portfolio okay. to the customer. Um, until end of this year will be roughly two thirds of overall products at Infineon. And then, of course, there's a long tail because um, in certain areas it's more effort to generate the data, right? But I think it's very much appreciated and we had already today a couple of good customer um, interactions where the customers really appreciate it that we are able to provide this kind of transparency. Right? And you know, only what gets measured gets done, right? Or can be quantified and that's great. Great, so last year, 2023 mm. has been uh, identified as uh, the warmest year on, on record. So based on, on that, what uh, action, what uh, uh, action are being uh, uh, emphasized by industry leaders in, the, in this regard because uh, to address the urgent need of, uh, yeah. of renewable energy sources uh, to combat the escalating uh, threat of global temperature rise. So I, have, I took some note in particular how significant is uh, the recent increase of over 360 gigawatt photovoltaic power worldwide that should be Rep representing a 30% growth in renewable energy capacity. Yeah. So how is it significant in the context of uh, combating climate change and reducing a carbon footprint, but also what strategies we need to, to reduce, to make energy, renewable energy, most competitive, so cost competitive with uh, fossil fuels? Yeah, I think um, first the bad news, I totally agree. By far 23 was the warmest year ever recorded, as you said correctly. I, I just looked it up. Um, now the first half of this year, right, is again beyond 23. So for 24, the history repeats itself, right? You see also in certain areas huge droughts, right? You see um, a lot of flooding, yeah? That means the whole climate system is getting more and more to the edge, so to say, yeah? But the other topic you mentioned is, of course, also some good news. Because of the competitiveness and the ever-improving cost and hence price position for us as consumers for PV, more than 360 gigawatts last year only, right? That means every day a gigawatt was installed globally and hopefully also connected to the grid. And that gives hope, right? 
And we see also from our customers that this trend will not stop, right? It okay. will continue. We have, of course, also seen our reaction that in certain areas there's also oversupply in the semiconductor supply chain also on our end customer side. But also here the good news is that even improves the cost competitiveness. So I would say overall the share of renewable electricity will significantly increase. As the example that I mentioned, right, Infineon is now for more than 80% already um, green, using green electricity. And until end of next year, we will have converted all electricity, 100% to green sources, which is enabled is by PV, by wind. Right? And I think, nevertheless, we have to further accelerate. Given the CO2 issue that you mentioned, it's still not enough. We're on a good path, but we have to increase the speed. Great. So, let's talk about hydrogen. So, hydrogen-based uh, energy technologies, I mean, uh, green hydro hydrogen, in, the, in this case, have been going uh, on uh, for some time. So, and uh, Europe in particular is, in Europe, the technology is robust. So, what about hydrogen for the decarbonization for our economy? Yeah. Um, I personally and we at Infineon do believe that this is one of the really next big things. If you visit our booth, for example, and of course you're cordially invited, we Thank have um, a part of a reference design or a demo, right, where we have basically um, an idea how to power okay. a hydrogen conversion um, system, um, high power, high power usage, because we see this market is picking up. It's still in the early stage and in the end, uh, the penetration of the hydrogen um, business and industry is again um, decided by price. Okay. Is it possible to bring the hydrogen price per 1 kg hydrogen down to the level where, for example, the chemical industry, which needs, of course, huge amount of fossil fuels today, natural gas, is then, of course, also willing to accept this as an alternative source. So it's again all about cost. It's about the conversion efficiency. And I think we have now very good technological solutions in place to support this from an inverter electronics, power electronics point of view. And it's now up to the customers, of course, together with us to find out what's the best way to decrease or increase the efficiency of the system to increase the cost and then also pri price for green um, generated hydrogen. Opportunity is huge. Uh, just to add on it, um, sure. I was also visiting Hannover Fair this year and I was really surprised because there was one of the very, very, very big um, exhibition halls filled up with startups and also big companies taking care only about hydrogen. That was mm. really impressive. Nice. So you see that this is gaining traction, gaining momentum, but large scale industrial usage still to come. Yeah, nice moment for hydrogen. So last, my last question for you, Peter. So looking forward, uh, following the climate change for sure innovation uh, will play an important role to reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, what do you see the next big trend, the next big innovation in power electronics market? Any emerging technologies that could be game changers? But also, so what are the considerations that the companies should uh, take care, should keep in mind to stay competitive, that is important, but also to capitalize on these uh, exciting developments? Yeah. I think um, all these opportunities, we touched a couple of them, right? Provide of course, a huge market growth potential yeah. that, of course, also attracts competition. <laughs> and as you correctly say, um, we have to stay competitive on the cost side. But cost in semiconductors is, of course, competitive cost position comes from innovation, right? Okay. Going down the shrink path and uh, having innovative ideas how to reduce in the end the system costs, the cost of our customer systems. And I, th I think the big things, uh, also no surprise, beyond silicon, it's wide band gap. And here um, we are, I think, also very happy that we now can continue to complete or increase the offering on our portfolio for silicon carbide and gallium nitride particularly. We know for um, high power applications beyond 1 kV blocking voltage today, we speak predominantly about silicon carbide. So now we recently, or we used the fair to introduce our Gen 2, yes. which regarding figure of merit, silicon carbide Gen 2 is massive improvement towards Gen 1. And if we do, of course, also the competitive analysis, we're very proud that we set a new benchmark that we're going to introduce for 650 volt and 1200 vo volt blocking voltage um, first. But of course, we do not stop there. We expand the portfolio towards 2 kV blocking voltage, for example. Now we have to offer 2 kV silicon carbide discretes. And of course, now the, how to say, 
the engineering um, lighthouse is the 3.3 kV um, silicon carbide module, right? 1000 M nominal current, 1.9 milli ohm um, mm -hmm. RDS on. Mm -hmm. I think that also sets some benchmarks. And I think this is what we mean with innovation, um, enabling our customers to driving down system costs. And that was silicon carbide, or some, some highlights from silicon carbide. The other side is, of course, gallium nitride, where we now also, thanks to the new colleagues, previously Gun Systems, have a significant enhancement of our um, switch portfolio, of our technology portfolio, not only addressing 650, but going also down in voltage classes, being able to address the huge variety of switch mode power supply and, of course, other uh, power device technologies. Yeah. Great. So, Peter, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for this opportunity and this uh, great uh, conversation. And enjoy. Peace I am. Have a good day. See you next. Thank thanks you. so much, uh, Maurizio. It was a pleasure as always. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And don't forget powerelectronicnews.com. Thanks.